Hi there, YouTube, Mark Verheer here. Um, I think I'm a couple of days late, but, you know, I don't really care that much that I'm a bit late, but it's actually a very special year. Um, it's an anniversary of uh, this this beast, the, uh, the PlayStation. Uh, it actually was released on the same date as the um, Dreamcast, so both the Dreamcast and the PlayStation, of course this was released much earlier, uh, but they have been released on uh, the 9th of September. And uh, yeah, this, this one, this is actually my original PlayStation that I got back in the day. It's the exact same unit. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very stoked with this uh, machine. I've, uh, since then, I've, I've, I've bought several more. I've got chipped versions. I've got uh, American versions. The Crow actually was very kind to send me an American version. This is the PAL unit. My original PAL unit. And as a celebration, uh, I'd like to show you uh, my, uh, my Net Euros, which is a very uh, special region free uh, variant of the PlayStation. And I'll first show you uh, what comes with it. Actually, it comes with a software development tool toolkit. And uh, it, it shows its age because if you look at the fact that it is compatible with PC AT DOS 5, um, then well, you really uh, <laughs> you really uh, know that this dev kit is actually quite ancient. Um, it does contain of it does have a, a registration card, dispatch notes. Uh, registration card comes with a software development tool startup guide of course all in Japanese <laughs> it comes with the software development tool uh, it has snippets of code C yeah, C is the code to develop it in I've actually downloaded a version of the uh, English um, of the English uh, uh, documentation, but as you can see, very nicely uh, done books. And then it comes with this box. Uh, I think this um, is a list of contents and then a description. And let me open up. So it comes with uh, a disc for the PC, which is uh, the software developing kit. It also comes with a boot disc. Oops, and this actually, uh, it also comes with a boot disc for the Net Geros. And it also comes with a special memory card. The access card, which uh, sits in its own precious little little box, and it comes with a cable for hooking it up uh, to the PC. So one end goes into the serial port of the NetGeros, and the other one goes into the serial port of the PC. But yeah, um, a very nice kit, and in in this form, I probably will not use it because it's not accessible for me because I'm, you know, not Japanese speaking. But, I mean, yeah, this, this really made, this really made uh, developing for the, uh, for the PlayStation platform quite accessible. Um, and quite a few programmers have actually learned to program the PlayStation and the later models just because of this and there's also a, oops crap there's also a um an english version for uh, of this but yeah this is the japanese uh, software developing kit and then of course the naturals the box so it's it states the contents it states uh, the contents in multiple uh, languages 
English, French, and German, so this is a PAL unit. The model number is the DTLH3002. On the back, it says that it can uh, run uh, games with the PlayStation logo and NTSC Japanese, NTSC U UC PAL, uh, NTSC American Japanese. So um, the thing is that you want to use an NTSC color uh, television set or monitor if you want to have color, but most TVs in my, in my neck of the woods are actually multi-norm. So basically this also is a region-free PlayStation. So you don't have to chip it, but you, you can actually have a, a region-free version of it. So let me unpack it and uh, and on top on top you have a plug. So and this is very kind. The Brits aren't left out because this is actually a, um, a plug for the uh, UK. Uh, so you can attach it to the power cord. So uh, yeah, it's also accessible for UK users. This card plug with a composite uh, video input. A video plug. Uh, so it has um, uh, a composite video with cinch uh, uh, adapters on both sides, which actually is quite interesting. The power, the power cord. And I actually, I saved this, I saved unboxing this uh, for this special occasion, the birthday of the PlayStation. What it also comes with is controllers. And the controllers aren't dual analog controllers, they're uh, controllers. Oh, I'm just gonna take one out of the package. And some people say, oh, leave it in there, leave it in there, don't, don't ruin it, don't ruin it, don't unbox it. But And they have a very nice matte finish. But these are the original controllers and they have a really nice matte uh, finish to them. But yeah, the original controllers, it actually look quite a bit like Super Nintendo controllers in a way. But yeah, not used before. Of course I'm going to use this system. Well, then you lift up the lid and then you see the contents. Basically it looks very similar to what you find on the, uh, on the, on the original, uh, yeah, on the, on the, on the standard uh, PlayStation uh, box. So this is the manual which is also very similar. And then we have the system to styrofoam uh, bits that hold it in place which is also exactly like the original uh, consumer models. And then the net gyros in all its glory. And I'm not sure if you can see the finish, but the finish of this, whoops, it's a very nice matte finish to it. Uh, very tactile. You, you actually, the, you see the, the shine, shiny PlayStation logo. Well, an original PlayStation has a shiny finish to a shiny finish to it. And this is a very nice matte black or gray, anthracite gray finish. Reset button, power open. So yeah, it's, it's actually just a, a, a gray PlayStation with memory card slots. And the difference is that it also has a composite video out. And it also has uh, RFU-DC out, an AV multi out, and the serial I.O. And the serial I.O. is actually the bit that you use for uh, the, the, the parallel cable, or the parallel cable, <laughs> the serial cable that you hook it up to the PC with. And of course, it also comes with the, the famous parallel port 
Let me see if I can open it up. The, the little lid can be a bit temperamental. Yes. So there you have uh, the parallel port. And um, yeah, I'm quite curious. Um, if you hook it up, will it actually display a different logo? So I'll, I'll hook it up to my TV and, uh, and, and we'll see what it does, how it performs. So I'm just gonna set it down. And, and boot it up. So yeah. I'll... So this is actually an attempt to show you the matte, matte gray finish. And I must say it's a dust magnet. <laughs> yeah, but it's a very cool system. And this is the, the controller. You can actually see the matte finish of the controllers. It has kind of a bit of a rubberized feel to it, but yeah, very cool, very cool. So this is actually the uh, the underside of the unit. So it's a PAL unit. It has a voltage rating from 220 to 240 volt volts. And uh, yeah. Okay, so I hooked it up and let's see what happens if I press power. So you think, well, it begins quite normal. Hey, but this is different. So it has a selection module. So probably if I choose this, it goes into some sort of music CD mode, which is quite different from uh, the, the later models. Uh, let's go back. And then you have the, uh, well, the memory card, the PC mode. So here you have, um, some sort of copy, file copy format, uh, I guess, uh, copy from memory to the memory card, uh, copy from memory card to memory card and erase something. Uh, very interesting. And uh, I'm very curious what will happen if I put in uh, games from various regions. So first to put in is the American version of Tekken. So yeah, let's put it in. And I think I have to press reset. Oh, so that's a bit different. So it boots the disc if you put it in. So it says United uh, Computer Entertainment America. And my TV is multi-norm, so it, 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 it just displays color. As you can see, it just boots it without any issues. Round one. Uh, I'm playing with one hand, of course, so... But yeah, it works. So let's put in Rally Cross. That's a PAL version of the game. And let's see what happens. So I guess this, this menu system actually also appears on the early PlayStation models, if I'm not correctly. So if I'm not mistaken, so and look, Sony Entertainment Europe. So it displays the same logo, it does the same thing. It's multi-norm. And for people who don't want to mod a PlayStation and really want to have something that is actually quite special, one of these, Annette Jarrows is not well. It's, it's 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 a thing you could you could go for. So, <laughs> going through some menus. But I must say the uh, the output, the composite video output is really crisp. The 
again. Of course, I'm I am uh, using the single hand to control the game. But yeah, of course, there's jittering. I'm not sure if you can tell, but yeah, that's always uh, present in PlayStation One and PlayStation Two systems. But let's try the Japanese game. So the last game uh, we're going to see a snippet of is Dragon Beat A Legend of Pinball. And it's a Japanese game. So yeah, let's put it in. As you can see, a very nice Japanese disc. Now let's see what happens. Sony Computer Entertainment, so that's the logo that you see with Japanese games. So, map in Japan. Okay, let's Let's see if I can start the game without too much displaying, displaying too much music. Yeah, and I'm filming like that. So, castle, why not? Remember to press the circle instead of the cross because uh, Japanese games, they have the circle. Japanese use a circle for for um, marking something, whereas uh, in the West we use the uh, the X. So that's quite a difference between the uh, the two regions. Yeah, let's dance here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Oops, tilt. <laughs> oh man, I was using the uh, I was using the uh, trigger buttons, but I guess that uh, can that triggers a tilt. Oh crap! The sound effects are just crazy. Something special. Underground gale. Bell hold. Let's. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, holy crap. Well, yeah, as you can see, it boats all the regions. It, it will not boat uh, copies. But uh, <laughs> the sound effects in this game are just, yeah, over the top. They're just horrible. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, let's dance here. So yeah, um, the net Jeros. The net Jeros is my, uh, well, I opened it up, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it off. The Net Jeros is actually, um, yeah, my unit that I opened up, especially for this anniversary of the PlayStation. And, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to put this back into its box, uh, just because I have so many other systems that I can play with. Um, but it's, it's a nice thing. I think if I didn't have a chipped uh, PlayStation, or if I didn't have... An NTSC model PlayStation. Uh, I'd probably use this as my main PlayStation because it's multi-norm and I can play all my my complete library. I have a, have a library of Japanese games, American games, and, and, and European PAL games. So uh, yeah, the Naturos uh, gives me that opportunity uh, to play that unmodified. Uh, if you guys want to see something uh, uh, on the de uh, on developing for the PlayStation, I actually have installed. Uh, the dev kit on an old PC, um, uh, an, uh, an English dev kit, so um, it may actually be very interesting to see uh, whether or not I get something running, a Hello World or something, 
would probably be something that uh, that is actually quite cool. But yeah, de developing for the PlayStation, you actually do with C. And uh, the dev kit that is used for the NetGeros for the consumers is actually a, a cut down version of the original uh, uh, commercial dev kit, that uh, full blown kit that dev uh, developers used. But if you get your bearings with the consumer dev kit, then uh, you definitely will be able to get something going uh, with the professional dev kit as well. It's a shame that uh, you don't see a lot of homebrew, you don't see a lot of uh, um, games coming out for the original PlayStation uh, anymore. Uh, but I think it's uh, it's uh, it's an untapped uh, system that actually has a lot of secrets uh, that still need to be uncovered. And uh, yeah, I'm focusing on uh, Commodore 64 development for now, but I may actually venture into a PlayStation development if. I get anywhere with the Commodore 64 first. So yeah, Mark signing off, and this is just my, you know, my small tidbits, my snippets on uh, the PlayStation. So yeah, PlayStation uh, celebrating its, uh, I believe it's 20th year. Is it its 20th year? Yeah, yeah, 95, yeah, it's 20th anniversary. And uh, yeah, it's a system that this, is a system that really got me back into console gaming. Uh, when this came out, Windows 95, Windows 98, you know, was, was around the corner. Uh, DirectX became possible. Uh, you had incredibly expensive 3D hardware acceleration cards for your PC. The prices for those cards were actually, well, probably were as expensive as one of these units. With this unit, uh, gaming was pretty much fu uh, f uh, future proof. Um, yeah, actually, this, this unit also has uh, the uh, serial I/O and the a uh, AV multi, uh, but it does does not have the uh, composite video out, and it does not have the power port. But yeah, this I mean, gaming on the uh, on the PlayStation. I mean, it was pretty much future proof. Uh, future games coming out would would most definitely run on this system um, no problems um, you didn't have to worry about your processor being too slow your graphics card not being able to uh, have all the modes available you didn't have to tweak your settings well for some people that's actually a very interesting and very nice way to go about things for others it's actually not something to look forward to they just want to stick in a disc and they want to just play the game um, so yeah there's something to be said for console gaming. Console gaming from the compact disc era where there were no updates, where the game on the disc was actually the game on the disc. You you, you, you just had the game. It, it wasn't able to be patched or something. Uh, but you just, I mean, the games were worth it. And uh, I mean, you can r run them without any server interventions 20 years down the road. I wonder if that will be possible with the PlayStation 4 games and the Xbox One games. And well, the next generation of consoles may actually end up being download only. So yeah, this to me is a prime example of the golden age of console gaming. Um, this and the uh, PlayStation 2, which of course I have multiple, 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 multiple versions of. I mean. Remember, I'm sitting in my study and I just reach one of three PlayStation FAT 2 con uh, cons uh, consoles that are just sitting within arm's reach. And of course, you can see Commodore 64, Commodore C16, and Commodore, my new Commodore. So yeah, there's a couple of systems that are very dear to my heart. And the, uh, what is it? The, um, whoops, I'm going to put it down the right way down. The Commodore 64. The PlayStation and the PlayStation 2, those are systems that are very dear to me. And deeper, these represent the core, that's the core uh, consoles, core, core systems that I consider uh, the, yeah, the core part of my gaming collection, my gaming experience. Of course, there's many other systems that are very dear to me, but those, yeah, those, <coughs> sorry, those really are the great systems for me. So yeah, 
NetGiro's awesome system, and um, I, I'm very, I, I feel very fortunate to be able to own one. So yeah, Mark signing off, and I'll be back with another video soon.